most of them, what they had in common was being low income. But he believed that entrepreneurs have a fire within. And I, I believe it too, but I'll go a step further that that fire within is like an amber. And really, it needs to be fanned into a flame. And at Latino Economic Development Center, that's what we try to do. And the strategies that we've looked, implemented and used that work are some of the following things. Um, identify the need for support and advocacy. So when we work with an entrepreneur, we first try to find out where they are in their process, in what they know and what they need to be learning. And we try to make sure that they get that support and they get the advocacy to overcome barriers that they encounter as they try to start a business in this country. We analyze the potential of that entrepreneur. And you know, working in community service and nonprofit organizations, working with human beings who are dreaming about a job, who are dreaming about a business, thank you. Um, I always used to fight for, we eliminate no one. When all the applications are on the table and there's 25 of them and there's only <coughs> 20 slots for our class, I didn't want to eliminate anybody. But the reality is there is wisdom in analyzing the potential of each entrepreneur for success if you're going to dedicate resources, time, and energy to that entrepreneur to develop them into a business owner. There should be some, uh, some analysis and some, some criteria you use to determine whether that entrepreneur can be, has a good chance of being successful. And sometimes they'll surprise you. So technical assistance provider as guide and mentor. Um, I, you know, we've been called a lot of things uh, as far as uh, anointed with uh, professor and maestro and, and all these, you know. The reality is we're guides. And sometimes we turn into mentors. And the skill sets used to do both of those activities with an entrepreneur is like a dance. And you need to know the steps and you need to, you need to know how to make adjustments to those steps and what the role is that you're providing for that entrepreneur at that time. But always, always, I say guide and mentor because to me, those terms for what we do demonstrates respect for that entrepreneur. This is an adult who has come through life, who has experiences of their own, and together we find them, we make a plan, we guide them, and we mentor them if that's what's needed. Uh, fill in the knowledge gaps and remove the barriers. Lots of barriers, lots of pieces missing. Sometimes we meet entrepreneurs that it's like a checkerboard, and we're amazed at the skill sets that they bring to the activities that they're trying to do, and we're also amazed at what they lack or what's missing. But we try to understand and we try to provide the information and the guidance that they need so that their lack of understanding in any given area will not hinder them, but also that the barriers that exist that shouldn't be there, we make an effort to find a way over, around, under, through, whatever that is that we need to do to help this entrepreneur. Development of the social network connections I wanted to talk about this, and this is very, very, very important. Many of our entrepreneurs are based in their communities. Uh, when we talk to them and we say, who are you going to sell your product to? And they say, well, so are Latinos. All the other Latinos. They're my customers, you know. They understand that social network and the connection that they have established and the connections that they can be established to this community, uh, but they don't understand it in the way that we talked about it here social network. They just know that their compadres, comadres, vecinos are going to buy from them and that that works, it's worked for them. In Mexico, it's working here. If I find them, they will come to me. Um, access to resources, money, advocacy, and ongoing learning are critical elements of supporting and developing micro entrepreneurs who are immigrants. And it is something that we are experts at. I'm going to go ahead and brag a little bit. We're really good at this. Um, and we are sharing those ideas with others. And in the state of Minnesota can be real proud of the support that we get to do that. Community support recognition. Opportunities to learn and adapt to the culture. I'm going faster. Systems and processes. 
processes without barriers, critically important to micro entrepreneurs, immigrant micro entrepreneurs. Uh, in the, the other session, they talked about language. You know, they want to make uh, official language English for the state. Uh, you know, this is a th it's a barrier already. If they do that, that's even going to be more of a barrier. And we do not want to stifle this economic engine that my, that Latino entrepreneurs represent. Uh, incorporation of children, adolescents, and adults into this supportive uh, uh, learning process and uh, recognition. Uh, investment in and support of Latino-owned businesses. That is something that we do. We recognize them. We have somebody with us here today that we recognize and is going to come and talk to us a little bit. And I think it's important to hear from him. Oh, I'll trip myself. I think it's important to hear from him, hear his own words, and find out how he got started. Um, recognition of immigrant contributions. You know, and I, I typed this in and, and said, say hello and thank you. Break down social barriers. You know, that's kind of silly, but I'm serious. Anybody here that knows me, they know that I'm real serious about this. And I said it in there, too. We people need to connect. We need to connect. We are too much separating ourselves from these communities. The very social network that Latinos depend upon can keep them barricaded in their own little silo. And, and you can help break them out through some recognition, some investment in the community, uh, some of the people. Uh, immigrants fuel the economy engine. We're out of Yolanda. I understand. That's great. That's okay. Oh, for me? Oh, please, I'll finish. This, I think there's only, let me tell you right now where we are. Um, yeah, we're real close. <laughs> yeah, that's the second to the last. Immigrants, a first step in revitalization. On Lake Street, if anybody knows the story of the development on Lake Street, the Latino immigrants that came into that community and decided that they wanted to do all the sacrificing and the investing, putting their energy to start businesses on Lake Street, they were the first step in revitalization of that very, very uh, depressed and uh, crime-ridden corridor. Uh, commercial activity breeds life on the street. It did on Lake Street. It does everywhere it happens. Doesn't matter how it looks. People coming out, shopping, spending their money, creates an increased tax base. Eventually, it attracts investment. Many of the businesses on Lake Street are now owned by Latinos. More and more so, that is happening. And it's a very important part of uh, building the entrepreneurial community and creating the acquisition of assets for them that makes the real, real, deep, and profound changes for their uh, community and families. Uh, investment in of uh, investment of profits. They they turn that money right back into those businesses, folks. And we all benefit from that. In the long run, because the business is doing better, it increases the tax base, the street improves, the community improves. It's just a good thing all around. Success recreates ownership and pride. And we know what happens with ownership and pride. Isn't that the goal? And good, the good spreads. That is good economics. <coughs> On the road to success, connected to networks, traditional and media networks. We know that Latinos have their traditional social network connections, but there also is a growing segment of Latino community and within the entrepreneurial community that is also accessing media, uh, social networking connections and doing a good job of that. And as the younger generations come up, that happens more and more. Some of the older folks and some of the uh, uh, more traditional uh, micro-entrepreneurs may not utilize some of the uh, stuff available to them to do network connecting and, and to you know, get online and do all that. But it's coming. And their children will, will certainly do that. That's that assimilation of not just culture, but ideas and learning that we have. Building their businesses, 
is something that they do with joy, with pleasure, with their arms, their feet, their pocketbooks, and their heart. Uh, purchasing and producing goods and services for their community, for other communities. You can go to any restaurant on Lake Street and you will see an increase of white faces, black faces, that are now coming to understand what's happening on that street and what, what they can access. Creating jobs and hiring employees. We see a lot of this. We see a job created here, a job created there, a job created here, three here, four there, 10 here. Some of our entrepreneurs have over 100 employees. So lots of them are within the range between 20 and 50. Uh, lots of jobs have been created. I don't have numbers for this. I kind of don't speak to those numbers. I kind of speak to what I'm speaking to you. Drawing a picture, painting a picture to look. Improving their business skills, that happens as part of what we do, whether it be through hard knocks, or whether it be through workshops, we know that lessons are being learned. And business skills are being improved. Incorporation into American business culture, which is a big part of what we try to do, and is as we, we're being somewhat successful. And assimilation into American culture, pero con sal.